So moving on from there, if I want to look, let's say I want to take a look at this Azure Active Directory one here. If I look over here to the side, I can see that I'm actually receiving data. Within four minutes ago, that was the last time I received logs. And with this uh, data connector here, it comes with nine workbooks, two pre-built queries, and 110 analytic rule templates. And we'll be able to go through those uh, throughout today and investigate those. And some of these um, data connectors, and I'll show you what they look like here in a minute. Uh, so there's dependencies on the licensing that you would have with Microsoft, uh, you know, like E3 or E5 or Azure P1 or P2, uh, or on-prem versus uh, cloud native different connectors. But in these data types here, if we look at, we see these green ones here, these show a connected icon. That means that the sign-in logs or the audit logs, those are actual data tables that we'll look at in a little bit. Those are actually being ingested into uh, Sentinel. Having that data being ingested allows me to write those KQL queries that uh, are the basis for analytic rules that create um, incidents when you know some type of anomaly or uh, suspected malicious activity is detected uh, versus the ones that I that I don't have. So for instance, uh, Azure AD risky users. So right now in this lab, I only have uh, Azure AD P1. If I had Azure AD P2, I would have the ability to uh, run those uh, risky user um, uh, conditional access policies like we looked at in that first uh, zero trust session. And I'd be able to create alerts or raise incidents or have some type of automation uh, take effect on, you know, potential risky users. So hope that makes sense, right? So data connectors, receiving logs, the different data types that are being ingested versus the ones that are not. Thank you.